Hi guys and welcome to today's video on line segment graphs, part of the Fermat's course here in Australia and all over the world. Yes, maybe not all over the world, but line segment graphs are. It is awesome that you have joined me. My name is Darren Maskuru, and um, yeah, I'm going to continue with my video series. If you haven't already done so, can you click on subscribe if you're on YouTube or head over to maskuru.com, sign up there, absolutely free, uh, where you can get these videos, ordered by textbook with downloadable notes and time codes and all that exciting stuff. Um, so what on earth do it mean by line segment graphs? Well, basically by the end of this video, I want you to know what a line segment graph is and know how to read information from line segment graphs. And graphs are absolutely everywhere. Our brain loves visual information. And as you can see there on the screen or behind me, there is an infographic. Now, infographics are everywhere nowadays because if we want you to actually take in some information, the best way to do it is in some sort of a graph or a table or a diagram. Pages and pages of text, our brain just goes, <sighs> not interested. But a diagram, we're like, bring it on, give me more. And so that's very much what this is all about. Yeah? If we can turn numerical data or if we can turn words into some sort of a graph, um, our brain is more likely to actually look at it. So uh, what is a line segment graph? And there we go. There is an example of a line segment graph. And as I say, in this particular instance, Matt is awesome because a line segment graph is a graph of what is made out of line segments. And I deliberately misspelled that. Hey, I'm a maths teacher. Who <laughs> needs to do English? <laughs> Hold on, I'm English. Hold on. Now, anyway. So yeah, this graph here has one, two, three, four, five, six individual line segments. And you can see they're all joined at the same point, or rather they're all joined to each other at a particular point. And if we were to try and describe this graph, we would say that it seems to be going up a little, well, maybe if I do it in the way of the camera, up and then down and up and up and down. If we were to go back to our modular staffing core, that data analysis stuff or data analysis stuff, then we would say that maybe there was an increasing trend here. We'd be looking at trying to work out what the data is trying to show us. And as we can see here, I have absolutely no idea because uh, Wikipedia, who I've taken this graph from, actually that doesn't make any sense to me. So maybe if you understand it, can you just let me know? But graphs tell us something. This could be about the number of subscribers that one day I could live to hope to have on my YouTube channel because no one watches math videos, do they? Never going to be rich, never going to be famous, never going to be watched. Anyway, um, but again, here's another example. This seems to show some sort of pattern with it curving up. Yes, again, this is a line, this is a line, this is a line, that is a line, and so we go on. But in this situation here, we actually have... Um, sort of quantities on a graph that make sense, time and speed. So the chances are this could look at me sort of flooring it as I sort of handbrake, turn it out of my driveway and hoon off down the street. I don't hoon. If you could see my car, last thing it's ever going to do is want to hoon. Yeah, but this graph tells a story. This one here is more likely to be my actual subscribers after this video. Starts high and goes down in a horrible way. And it even is colored in red, which is terribly depressing. Um, but, you know, these are line segment graphs, graphs that are made up of lines. Reading line segment graphs, really, really important. Yeah, because there's no point having a graph if we don't understand it. So I'm going to look at this graph here and what do I see? I've got time in hours. I've got distance in kilometers. So again, I've got some sort of distance and time. Hold on. Distance and time? What links distance and time? Well, speed. Yes, indeed, speed. So this could be some sort of a graph of speed that we'll come back to in a moment. But what you've got to notice is our labels, our graph has always got labels. Please make sure you write those on. It gives us information about what the graph is showing. Um, we can read along our graph to actually find values that stand for various times. So, for example, if I wanted to try and find a particular distance for a particular time, let's say I wanted to find the distance when time is equal to 3. How do I do that? Well, first things first, it's saying let the time be 3. And the way I do this is I tend to draw a dotted line up to that value and then across to my distance and I read it off. So in which case, in that situation, my answer would be 140. Yes, it would be 140 kilometers because you must make sure you write your units, so 140 kilometers. Now, I don't just have to have time. For example, what about if I wanted to find the time 
when my distance is equal to 80 kilometers. And I suppose I should put three hours there. Well, same thing. Find my distance of 80 kilometers, draw a dotted line across until it hits the line, and straight down and read off the value. Oh my goodness, it's between the one and the two. Yes, it is between the one and the two. In fact, it's halfway between the one and the two. And that would give me then that my time was 1.5 hours. Again, with these type of graphs, you have to be very, very careful with how many squares fall between each of those hours, because then you can work out what each of those squares stands for. Big trick in maths. In fact, I got tricked last year with the 2019 exam because I just didn't count the number of squares. I just stupidly thought they went up in units. It didn't, they went up in half a unit, and I got a couple of the questions wrong as a result, which was silly, because my brain played a trick on me. We have to remember that each line segment, if it's a line building on the previous videos from the previous chapter, then it will have a gradient. And as we've said before, gradient be given in two different ways. There is this rise over run, and then this y2 minus y1 equals x2 minus x1. Now again, if this is the formula, then they're basically giving you two coordinates, x1, y1, and x2, y2, yes? If I have those two coordinates, so if I look at the values between b and a, let's find the gradient. I can do it in two ways. Either I can do the rise over run thing, and there, once again, if you go back to my previous videos, I tend to draw a, a sort of a triangle, a right angle triangle, and I count how many kilometers it goes up. So it starts at 60, it finishes at 40, 60, 70, 80, 90, 110, 20, 30, 40. So that would suggest it was 80 kilometers high. How wide is it? Well, it goes from one to three, which is two. And so therefore, if I was gonna use rise over run, I would do 80 divided by two, which is equal to 40. Now that's the physical size of my gradient. What does it mean? Come to that in a moment. What about if we did it the other way with our coordinates? Well, we know the coordinate was three comma 140. And my co well, that's coordinate for B, my coordinate for A is one comma 60, all right? So now in which case, if I do my gradient, I do Y2 minus Y1. Ooh, that's gonna give me a negative number. Okay, let's do it the other way around. Because remember, we can swap these around as long as I make sure I do the same thing. So 140 minus 60 divided by, in this situation, three minus one. So that would give me 80 on two which is once again 40, so two different ways of doing it. And we can compare gradients. Why would that be important to me? Well, let's look at the gradient of the section here. Let's call this section two in comparison to the gradient of section one, which is steeper. Well, hopefully all of you will say the distance between O and A. Yep, so the difference between O, the origin, and A is steeper, which would suggest it's going faster maybe, because we're dealing with kilometers per hour than we would be going if we're going between A and B. So all of that from that one graph, yeah? Now as I say here, it's actually, when we do the gradient of a distance time graph, it's actually the speed or velocity of an item, yes? So we would know that OA would have one speed, AB would have another speed, and in which case we could find out which one or which part of my journey I was going faster. Now we already know between A and B, the speed was uh, 80 divided by two, which was 40. So I'm now gonna write 40 kilometers per hour. Now why was it kilometers per hour? Because I was doing a distance divided by a time. And we know that a per sign or the, the divide sign is the same as per. So if we were doing a distance in kilometers per a time in hours, that's why it's a speed of kilometers per hour. What about OA? How do I find the gradient of this? Well, let's do rise, which is 60 divided by a run of one. So in which case that's gonna be 60 kilometers per hour. And now we can see that actually the speed between O and A is much faster than between A and B. Okay, so let's have a look at an example of how to use this. And the examples are taken from the Cambridge Further Maths textbook. Thank you very much, Cambridge. Um, and so what do we see here? The graph shows a journey of a car through three towns, A, B, and C. Okie dokie. 
uh, on a highway. B is 80 kilometers from A. Okay, that sort of makes sense. There's my point B. There is my 80 kilometers. Yep, we can see that. Thank you very much. Uh, where was the car at 9 a.m.? Where was the car at 9 a.m.? So where suggests an actual place name. So at 9 a.m., what did we have? We were at point B. And so there we go. At, I would be writing at 9 a.m. We were at point B. What, <clears throat> what about 9.30? And again, trying to work out where the difference in times are here. So we've got 9 o'clock and we've got 10 o'clock and we've got three little marks between them, haven't we? Yes, we do have three little marks between them. So how long is that? Well, that's weird. It's a third of an hour. So each of those little marks stands for 20 minutes. So if we look at where halfway between 9 and 10 is, that's 9.30, what do we notice? We are still actually 80 kilometers from the start. And those horizontal line means I'm actually not moving. I'm stationary. I'm not going anywhere. Probably sitting in my car, eating a Macca's. So again, at 9.30, I'm still at point B. So being able to read these things, really important. What was the average speed of the car between A and B? Now, again, average speed. We know that average speed is the distance traveled divided by the time taken or the gradient of that line. So if we're going to find the gradient of AB, let's do rise over run. So if we do rise over run between AB, so we have the rise of 80 because it's going from zero up to 80 divided by the time taken is one hour. So in which case our speed would be 80 kilometers per hour. Fabulous. What about the gradient of BC? So the gradient now of BC. So let's look at B to C. Again, we can just look at this section here. Yeah, because we're, we're starting to move here and we're finishing there. So 160 to 80, we go 20, 40, 60, 80. So that's 80 again, all right? So it's traveling from 80 kilometers from B to C. How long does it take? Well, it goes from that point there to that point there. Ooh, so that's one hour and 40 minutes. So that's actually one and two thirds of an hour, yeah? You would think that Cambridge would have made these slightly nicer, but apparently not. And when we put that into our calculator, and I'll leave that to you to do, we end up with the fabulous value of 60 kilometers per hour. <sighs> okay, so 60 kilometers per hour. Yeah, now notice again, the difference in these, between these is really important that you work out, yes? And sadly, a lot of people here will go, well, one hour and 40 minutes is 1.4 hours, and it really isn't, yeah? There are not 100 minutes in an hour, so we can't just do that. We have to make sure and go, so it's one hour and 40 minutes, which is one and two thirds of an hour. See, interesting tricks. Okay, so how long does the car stop at B? And again, so this is now weird because it's almost like we're going back on ourselves. Can you work out how long this takes? Well, yes, it stops for, uh, well, 40 minutes. Or if they were being horrible and said, you've got to write it as a fraction, then it would be two thirds of an hour because, you know, 40 minutes is two thirds of an hour because we're basically splitting up an hour into thirds. So there's one third, and two thirds between that section there. How long does the journey take in total? Well, once we've got to see, that's pretty much what it's looking for us to do. So it finishes at 11 a.m. What time do we start? Well, we started at eight, we finished at 11, so therefore we would do 11 minus eight, which would be three hours. So the total journey took three hours, and don't forget, it includes that stopping period. And this is the last part. What was the average speed of the car for the whole journey? Again, interesting trick. Now, because we're dealing with a whole journey, we need to find effectively the total distance traveled divided by the total times taken. So if you want average speed for a whole journey, it's equal to the total distance traveled divided by the total time taken. Now these notes are all downloadable. You can take them, print them off, and then annotate all over them, yeah? Because that's the whole point of notes, for you to write down what you need to know. So what was the total distance traveled between A and C? 
Well, reading off, the highest point we seem to get away is 160 kilometers. What was the total time taken? Well, we'd already worked that out. We left at eight and sort of got there at 11, so that was three. And again, can I do that nicely? No, so what I'm gonna do is look at the idea. Uh, what does it say? Give your answer the nearest whole number. Okay, so put it into my calculator. I think I get 53.3333. Okay, so I think that's 53.33. And again, what is my uh, unit? It's kilometers per hour because it's kilometers divided by time. And the time is obviously given in hours. And so to the nearest whole number gives 53 kilometers per hour. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen, I'm done. Now this reading from linear graphs is really important. Other videos are coming up with step graphs and non-linear graphs where you've still got to read the information from it. So hopefully this has been useful. If it has, give me a shout out on TikTok or to your mates, greatly appreciated. Head over to masterguru.com and sign up. It is totally free to do so and you get huge amounts of stuff on there. Um, otherwise, well, hopefully I'll see you in another video. Uh, you take care and please stay safe. All right, bye-bye.